We know Tennessee quarterback Joe Milton is incredibly talented, but just how well has he played this season and how will he handle the Missouri Blitz? I ask Eric Kane of Locked On Vols these questions and more on a special crossover edition of Locked On Mizzou. You are Locked On Mizzou, your daily podcast on the Missouri Tigers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Thank you, Thursday, everybody. Welcome into a Locked On Crossover Edition. I am Locked On Balls host Eric Kane. That man is Locked On Mizzou host John Miller, and we're here to preview the biggest. You know, probably not the biggest game in the SEC, but for us it is, for sure. It's a monster game, Tennessee at Missouri, Saturday at 3.30 Eastern Time. That is the CBS kick. Over the course of the next 30 minutes or so, we are going to talk quarterbacks, talk run game, defense, keys to victory, and our bold, or in our predictions for this uh, football game. Uh, John, you and I were talking before we hit record. This is kind of a kind of a huge swing game for both programs. For Tennessee, you got Georgia next week, and depending on what happens this weekend, could be playing for the East and for Missouri, uh, seven and two, three and two in SEC play, magical season. Try not to let Georgia beat Missouri twice, much like we always say about Alabama. Yeah, I think that's a great point. It's really an interesting spot for both teams. Like you say, it's a fulcrum game a little bit. I think if you're Missouri, you're coming off a spot where obviously you didn't expect to beat Georgia if you're a Missouri fan, but if the team probably a little bit disappointed, they got to get up for another huge game here against Tennessee, whereas Tennessee, like you say, they've got Georgia next week. So are both teams maybe a little bit off their game? I don't know. We'll just have to see on Saturday. So you look at Missouri, and, and you know I want to start this out by just kind of a brief synopsis of the of the season to date. Uh, Missouri team is having a really good year, and, and primarily you would know way more than me, but from a skill perspective, at least on the offensive end, you lose arguably your best skill player, Dominic Lovett, and, and you're better. It's a lot of the same guys. Brady Cook's back at quarterback. You got Cody Schrader at running back. Luther Burden's still there, wide receiver. A lot of positive results, especially on the offensive end. What's been different about Missouri so far this year? Again, Seven and two, three and two in SEC play. Yeah, well, on that receiver shakeup there, I guess you could say Dominic Lovett, when he went to Georgia, it actually allowed Luther Burden to slide into that slot position, which is more of his natural position. And actually, Missouri really was kind of overloaded with slot receivers, you could argue, a little bit last season. So I think the mix is a little bit better there. But Brady Cook had an injury last season, just coming off of a year of, of full experience. And then on top of that, I mean, the Missouri offensive line last season was a real weakness. I would even say it's been a strength this year, and that's on the back of mostly returning players. There's one transfer in the in the mix there at starter as the starters, but everybody else was on the roster last season. So it's just been a big improvement and a tip of the cap for sure to Eli Drinkwitz and his team's ability to develop, I would say. Yeah, for Tennessee, of course, you had such a magical season last year. Um, you know, 10 wins in the regular season, 11 wins overall. You went in November, ranked number one in the college football playoff rankings. And then you lost to Georgia and South Carolina, of course. But it was such a magical year last year. And then you lost Hendon Hooker, you lost Cedric Tillman, you lost Jalen Hyatt, you lost Byron Young, Darnell Wright was a top 10 pick. And so I think it took Tennessee a little bit to kind of figure itself out. Uh, you know, good football teams evolve over the year and, and, and good football teams get better. And I think that's what Tennessee's done. Uh, the last three weeks, Joe Milton, the quarterback, and we'll talk more quarterbacks here in a moment. Joe Milton's been really good. Um, he is, uh, the, the, the yards per attempt have gone way up. He's been efficient. I think the offensive line's gotten much better in front of him as they started figuring some things out. Tennessee's got the best run game in the SEC. We'll talk running game and Cody Schrader, Jalen Wright in segment number two. And then the defense gets after the passer a little bit. So I, I think Tennessee has taken a little while to kind of see who it really is, but it's gotten better as the year's gone on. And, and you know, here, here you are, a huge game on the road, and Tennessee needs to be at its best this week for sure. I brought up the quarterbacks. We, we, we briefly discussed – Brady Cook and, and Joe Milton a little bit, but Brady Cook, he's, I mean, he's leading the top five offense in the SEC, 24, 2,471 yards, 16 touchdowns, four interceptions, averaging 275 through the air a game. He's got five touchdowns on the ground, over 300 yards rushing on the ground gained, 
And he's playing at a really, really good level. Yeah, he absolutely is. As a Missouri fan, I don't know how you could have expected much more out of Brady Cook this season. Now, I think a lot of people on the uh, the national audience probably saw Missouri, a lot of them for the first time this past weekend against Georgia, and they're going to remember that fourth quarter interception there, that kind of brack back-breaking interception by Cook. It was a bad play by him, and, and he certainly is not a perfect player, but my goodness, he has improved so much from last season. And it's just his ability to process, I think, what he's saying, seeing, I should say, and, and to anticipate throws and just throw them with a little bit more aggression and confidence. And, you know, Eric, I'm curious what your take here is on Joe Milton because I was actually thinking last night, man, if you could put Joe Milton's arm on, on Brady Cook, boy, you'd really have something then because I think Milton just in terms of – I guess the the ability, arm strength, the ability to throw the ball an incredible distance. I'm not sure I've ever seen anybody more impressive at any level. Yeah, I mean, he's been hyped up all offseason. He's been a media darling. He's been, um, you know, a lot of national media members and, and everything have kind of hitched their wagon to him based on potential. And, I mean, he's a guy that is, I mean, he looks like Cam Newton. He's six foot five. He weighs 235. I mean, he's a big guy, and, and he right. can throw the football 90 yards. And it's so, unbelievable, really. It is unbelievable, yeah. but you know, through the first five, six games of the season, he was last in the SEC in yards per attempt. And, and I'm not saying that's all on him. I'm saying, I mean, it, Tennessee's receivers have gotten better. They're playing their best football right now, but they were not good a month ago. Um, they, they were not great. Uh, I don't. Uh, Joe Milton was not playing his best football. But, I mean, kind of, kind of the results were not there. But um, the last couple of weeks, man, he's been super efficient. He's been super accurate. He's thrown the football out of the pocket really well, something he's not done an awful lot throughout his career is kind of throwing off platform. He's also been running the football. And I know Brady Cook has the ability, you know, on third downs to run for a first down and, uh, you know, extend plays and escape pl escape ability and all that. You know, Joe Milton, that's not really been much of his game, but the past three weeks, Tennessee has dialed up some design quarterback runs for him. Hmm. It's almost like, let him go get hit early on the first, second drive, and then he's like, okay, I'm ready to play football now. That's kind of the joke here on the Knoxville right. beat, but it, it's been working a little bit. So his ability to run the football, utilize his body, go get the first down, that's something that I think has made him better as the year has gone on. But um, I, I think coming into the season, you'd say Joe Milton, Brady Cook, and eh, not really much of a quarterback battle, but where these two are at the, at, at the season, I think this is a, a really good quarterback battle here in, in Como. Yeah, I'm with you, and uh, I've, I've have been impressed by what I've seen from Milton the past few weeks, like you have been as well. And, and quite honestly, even though I just talked up his talent, uh, just his arm talent in general, I mean, some mind-boggling, literally, throws I've seen where I'm going, that's got to be, that, that can't be what I just saw, right? I've got to rewind this. At the same time, when he was at Michigan, I was not the biggest fan of his, and I really did believe that the Tennessee offense, the passing game in particular, also with Jalen Wyatt, the receiver, off to the NFL, or Hyatt, excuse me, off to the NFL, all that good stuff. I just thought, you know, the, the passing game might take a little bit of a downfall here, but it really seems to me, Eric, that the, the Tennessee running game has really picked up the slack and taken a lot of pressure off of Milton. Do I have that right? Oh, yeah, no doubt about it. We're going to get into the run game because I think it's two. You got the SEC's leading rusher in Cody Trader, and then you got the SEC's you know leading rushing team in Tennessee this year. And we're going to square off on on that conversation here in a moment. But you're exactly right. It's That's been the one constant, running the football, and Jalen Wright has been really, really good. So more on the Tennessee run game, more on Cody Schrader, plus a little defensive talk, and then we'll get our scores and keys to victory. That is coming up next. Right here as we continue to cross over on Locked On Vols and Locked On Mizzou, I do want to take the moment and tell you about Jace Medical. We spend a lot of time, both John and I, you know, with our respected shows, spend a lot of time together. We get fired up on wins. We get fired up on losses. Who starts, who sits. I'm thankful for that connection that we have with our audiences. And today I want to chat about something just a little bit more personal. Whether you're on extended travel, bracing for a major weather event, limited by yet another supply shortage, uh, you're covered, all right? You can be covered, my friend. Thanks to our partners at Jace Medical. It's an option for life-saving antibiotics and a long list of daily medications that can be ordered in one-year supply. Go online right now at jacemedical.com to receive 12-month supply on your daily medication. Remember, you can use the promo code LOCKEDON at checkout 
for a discount as well. A verified customer had this to say about Jace. I'm thankful for the service. Supply chain issues caused me to cut pills in half to have some. I ordered most of the daily meds with a year supply. I also ordered antibiotic kit. I feel secure now. Prices are lower than local pharmacies. I highly recommend this for everyone. If you or someone you love uh, would get uh, peace of mind by having a year supply of daily meds, go to jacemedical.com. It's an option for you. jacemedical.com to see if it's offered for you. Remember, use that promo code locked on for $20 off your purchase. That's jacemedical.com. We welcome you back here to a Locked On Crossover Edition. I'm Locked On Vols host Eric Kane, Locked On Mizzou John Miller, and uh, Tennessee, Missouri. It's going to be a 2.30 local kick on CBS, 3.30 Eastern time on Saturday. Both teams 7-2, and 3-2 and two in SEC play. So, John, you asked about the Tennessee run game. It's been really, really good. Jalen Wright's the headliner. But what makes Tennessee's run game so effective is, as much as we would love to see Jalen Wright get 20 touches a game, you know, it, it'll happen this week. Watch. It's just not going to happen because they play Jabari Small, who's a veteran in this league. They play Dylan Sampson, who is a sophomore but has shown the ability to hang with the big boys, and he can run inside the tackles and, and catch passes out of the backfield. They have a three-headed monster in the backfield. And, and so we would love to see Jalen Wright run the ball more, but I think the ability to keep all three of those guys fresh and, and ready to roll for the second half has been a big reason why Tennessee's run game has been so good. Now, Jalen Rott's going to be all SEC. Um, he'll be a 1,000-yard rusher you know, by season's end. Um, he's averaging like 8.1 yards per carry at this stage of the game. I mean, it's incredible. Nice blend of size and speed. His vision's been really good. In the last two weeks, he has uh, you know, housed a long run um, you know, for a touchdown on the opening drive. I think at Kentucky, it was 53 yards. And then this past week against UConn, it was 82 yards. So I'll be ready for that if you're Missouri on the opening possession for Tennessee. But the run game's been really good. That has been the one constant when Joe Milton, the passing game, the offensive line, everything else is kind of struggling. So Tennessee's run game is really good. Missouri's got the top running back in the SEC, Cody Schrader. Yeah, that's right. And one of the reasons that he is the top rusher in the SEC is because of the totally different approach that you just described because it's almost literally all Cody Schrader in the backfield right now for Missouri. I think Nathaniel Pete got two touches in the previous game. Uh, two games before that, I'm not even sure that he played. I mean, it was – Cody Schrader took, I mean, 95% of the snaps. It, it, it's re- He's been an unbelievable workhorse, a guy who was a Division two player all the way back into 2020-21. So just quite the story there for sure, and I, I just find it really interesting that, that it is such a different approach. And also not only in that – the way that Josh Heupel likes to use multiple running backs for the volunteers, but also he's basically running straight ahead more often than not. If I remember the Josh Heupel offense correctly, if I've been, you know, he was former Missouri offensive Mm -hmm. coordinator. He likes to run between the tackles more often than not straight ahead, a lot of play action. Then, Hey, let's take a deep shot down the field. A lot of that kind of stuff out of those wide splits, but Missouri they're running outside zone more often than not so just completely different approaches both very effective and the only thing I might slightly disagree with you Eric is you said the running back there was the the headliner I actually think the Tennessee offensive line is the headliner because yards after contact for a running back hey that's a running back stat give them the credit yards before contact that's an offensive line stat. And last time I checked, the top three running backs in the SEC in yards before contact all played for Tennessee. So that tells me that they are moving people off the line of scrimmage. Yeah, it's been a work in progress. You know, your center, Cooper Mays, missed the first five games of the season. You had um, a career backup left guard who was going to be your starting left guard, had to move down and play center. Now he's back at guard. There's been injuries at tackles all year long. So it's been very much kind of a rotation on the offensive line, and I hate that because I feel like on the offensive line, that's just not what you do. But that's something that Josh Heupel and Glenn Ellerby, who I'm sure you're familiar with that name. He was with Heupel at Missouri. They've done that in years past. They did it at Missouri. They did it at UCF. They've done it um, at some other places. Uh, But that offensive line's coming together. I I would agree with you there. It's been pretty solid for Tennessee. And in terms of the run concepts, Man, like last week against Connecticut, they were running straight at you. A lot of split zones, stuff like that. 
usually they're pulling tackle, they're pulling a guard, H-backs getting in there, kicking out the men on the line of scrimmage and getting upfield, whereas you're right, uh, they, don't, they don't do much zone concepts, which right. is a very common, you know, it's, it, you see it in the NFL all the time, you see it on Saturdays, you know, a little horizontal step and then go and get upfield. Um, looking forward to that battle, The the obviously the, the run game versus the run game, and, and now let's talk a little defense. We haven't talked defense yet in this podcast. Missouri, miles and miles and miles better than where it was the first couple of years under Eli Drinkwitz. Of course, you got a you know coordinator Blake Barker. I believe this is Baker. This is his second yep. season. Colin mm-hmm. plays. Lost a lot of talent on that defensive front for Missouri. But just, I still look at this defense, and I've seen this name for four years. Tyron Hopper. He's a good player. Chris Abrams Drain's going to be a first couple round NFL draft pick. He's had a pretty solid season. You know what's been the mo of the Missouri defense this year? Well, it, it's been, I think the first half of the season, I think you saw Missouri experiment a little bit with what it was defensively. Last season, Missouri was very much a man-heavy team, man-to-man coverage, bring a lot of guys in pressure, extra guys in the blitz type of team, a lot of single high safety, that kind of stuff. And I think you've seen Missouri get back to that a little bit more in the back half of the season here, the past two or three ball games in particular. Now against Georgia, it wasn't as much press man coverage, but they were still playing man-to-man more often than not from what I could see. So I am really curious how Tennessee has done against man coverage this season and also against teams that like to bring pressure, especially extra blitzers. Yeah, I mean, obviously with, with most quarterbacks, I mean, there's some elite level quarterbacks that really thrive when blitz or when under pressure. I mean, Joe Milton's not horrible under pressure, but he's much better when it, you know he's, it's kept clean and he can sit back there and you know dissect sure. and all that. Um, Tennessee against man coverage, I mean, they're going to run rub routes. They're going to run switch routes. Uh, Ramel Keaton had a wide open. And when I say wide open, I mean, I, I don't think anybody was 30 yards around him, wide open on a seam up the middle, and it was just off the basic switch route. The safety didn't carry him. You saw a lot of defenses get confused playing man coverage against Tennessee last year. Scheme, sure. I think a lot of it had to do with Jalen Hyatt, who's the New York Giant right now as well. He was right. just so quick and such a good route runner. You're not seeing as many Tennessee receivers get open like that open this year. But again, it's been much better the last couple of weeks. They're starting to come around a little bit. Not having Brew McCoy, that's a huge injury. Tennessee's you know moved Dante Thornton, who was formerly at Oregon, on the outside. So to answer your question, I think Tennessee is you know t- Tennessee will Tennessee's seen a lot of man coverage, and they're starting to get a little bit more separation and starting to beat that more as the year has gone on. Um, Want to ask you about again Tyron Hopper? Right? He's leading tackler for Missouri. Is he kind of the, the the straw that makes everything kind of go there for that defense? I mean, again, I think he's been playing since his freshman year. Well, he's he's actually, unfortunately, he's missed a lot of tackles this season. He's actually among the nation's leaders in missed tackles. So to me, to my eyes, he hasn't been quite as good as he was for Missouri last season. I'm not saying he's been terrible or anything, but as I had been saying all off season, I think the the two straws that really stir the drink for Missouri are Chris Abrams' drain, also Ennis Rake's straw as well, another cornerback who, to me, is not too far off from Abrams' drain, although Chris does get the headlines more often than not, and deservedly so. He's an absolutely excellent player. I just think the fact that Missouri has two guys on the outside and actually – really three now if you include Drayden Norwood who's been getting more action for the Tigers as the as Rakestraw occasionally moves inside and plays the slot on obvious passing dime type situations so to me it's really the Missouri secondary particularly on the outside that is really that's the special sauce to me Tennessee's defense um it, it's, it's again it's taken a step every year under Tim Banks um, the, the weak part of Tennessee defense is that secondary, whereas the strength for Missouri is probably the secondary. Still probably the weakness for Tennessee, but the front seven's gotten much better. Tennessee was really getting after the quarterback and bringing the quarterback down. One of the nation's leaders in sacks through the first five, six games. The last two and a half weeks, really since halftime in Alabama two weeks ago, Tennessee's struggled to get the quarterback down. Now, the TFL numbers have still been there, and, and I think that says a lot, too. I mean, TFLs, I mean, they're still pushing the pocket and everything. But I feel like a, a key here is to, you know, sure, go get Cook, you know, bring Cook down, sack Brady Cook, but force him into bad decisions. Last week against Connecticut, you had the interior pressure, force two pick sixes, um, and you take that over a sack any day. So James Pierce off the edge, 
Tyler Barron off the edge. Um, some guys like Omar Norman Law, Bryce and Easton, Amari Thomas up the middle. Those are some guys who met, who flash, and those are some guys who have uh, done a really, really good job this year for Tennessee on the front line. Linebacker Aaron Beasley is a veteran. Keenan Peely was going to be the starter linebacker season to this point, season ending injury in week one. Um, so you're having to play a sophomore, Elijah Herring, who is very much learning on the fly. Your backups are true freshmen, one of which is out right now. We'll see We'll see if he can come back. Very thin at linebacker if you're Tennessee. And then the safety, a lot of the same names, or then at secondary, a lot of the same names that have played for Tennessee the last couple of years. Uh, Jalen McCullough's there at safety. Wesley Walker's there at safety. Uh, you've got um, Tennessee's best cover corner, who was, man, he was having one of the better seasons in all the country in terms of uh, cornerback. Uh, Kamal Haddon, he's out for the season. So um, a lot of, some banged up uh, Danico Slaughter, Gabe Judy Lolly. Again, at this point in the season, nobody's ever 100% healthy, but I think Tennessee is a little bit banged up in the secondary. So at cornerback, so that could be something to kind of, you know, watch as, as Brady Cook is you know, probably throwing all over that Tennessee secondary because that's just how it happens. Hey, when we come back, though, let's make our predictions, keys to victory, all that and more right here as we continue to cross over Locked on Vols and Locked on Mizzou. Uh, I do want to tell you about our friends, Price Picks. Price Picks is the biggest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. Easiest and most exciting way to play DFS is just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, you pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. Price Picks is the most fun I've ever had, winning 25 times my money back this football season. And now I can play during basketball season as well. All you have to do is select two or more, two to six players, pick again more or less than. It's like picking totals. It's so much fun. And then watch your uh, place your entry and then watch your winnings roll in. This week on Price Pick, I'm selecting Steph Curry. I can mix and match and go NBA and NFL. I'm selecting Steph Curry, more than 29 points. I'm selecting Anthony Davis, more than two blocks. Christian McCaffrey, more than 75 rushing yards. And Joe Burrow, more than two passing touchdowns. And we'll see what happens if I can win 25 times my money back. But one of the best parts about this is if you go to pricepicks.com slash locked on. Let me try that again. Slash locked on college. Pricepix.com slash locked on college. You're going to get a first deposit match up to $100. I put in 50. They match me 50 on my first deposit. I put in 99. They match me 99. I put in 101. They'll give me 100. It's up to $100. But this is that promo code locked on college. Pricepix.com slash locked on college for an instant deposit match up to $100 on your first play. That's pricepix.com slash locked on college. We got a final segment left to this Thursday edition of Locked On Vols and Locked On Mizzou. I'm Eric Kane with Locked On Vols. He's John Miller of Locked On Mizzou. Tennessee at Missouri, 2.30 local time, CBS kick, 3.30 Eastern time. It's a huge game. It is a, a, a huge game and a lot of implications for both sides. Again, Missouri's having its best year in quite some time and you don't want to let Georgia beat you twice. Tennessee's got Georgia next week. Depending on what happens with Georgia Ole Miss, potentially, long shot, but potentially, the SEC East could be on the line for the following week, so a lot still in play here. Um, keys to victory. If Missouri is going to defend its home turf, if Missouri is going to win this football game, what needs to happen, John? Mm, that's a really good question. I, I think I think they need to pressure Joe Milton. I, I think that was kind of the key against Georgia last week, and at times they certainly did pressure Carson Beck, but not enough on, on third down situations, I would say. So I think in particular, those key third down, passing down type situations, if you can make Milton uncomfortable and Missouri is going to bring extra guys, they're going to play man on third and seven, third and 12, whatever it might be. So it's not going to be a big surprise here. going to be interesting to see what kind of plan Josh Heupel has in place here. But the more I think about it, I really do like the matchup for Missouri on those third and long situations because while Milton, a big guy, not necessarily a Jaden Daniels type runner that's going to escape the pocket, which is something that's hurt the Mizzou defense at times. And on the flip side, Brady Cook, how many, I mean, I, I know you don't have the specific number, but I mean, how many times has he been flushed out of the pocket on third down or – you know, it's third and whatever, and he's just like, hey, I'm going to take matters in my own hands. I'm just going to go. I feel like guys who have that ability are just so critical on third downs. 
I, I couldn't agree more. And you even see Patrick Mahomes at the NFL level do it all the time. Yeah. He, you know, again, he's not the Cam Newton runner, but if you just if it's third and ten and he sees the sees man coverage, sees a little bit of a window to step up in the pocket and go, he's going to do it. And you really saw Cook had the green light to do it against Georgia. I'm sure you'll see that again this week because Cook is a really strong runner, no doubt about it. You know, in the offseason, I knew Missouri's defense was going to be respectable because it was respectable last year. I did not envision Missouri's offense taking the step that it did this year. Um, I just, you know, when we're doing the win losses, win losses, sure. you know, season projections and all that. I mean, I had this as a win for Tennessee, and I think a lot of Tennessee fans did as well. Um, as the season's gone on, you've seen Missouri's offense be really, really good. That defense continued to be respectable. I'm not the biggest Eli Drakewitz fan, but he's done a great job this year. He's done a really, really good job. I think it's important for Tennessee fans to remember this is not going to be a 62-24, a 65-24. I mean, the last two seasons, Tennessee's outscored Missouri 128 to 48 on over 1,400 yards of total offense in two games, uh, 722 yards on the ground. Sure, Tennessee can be successful, and Tennessee can win this game, and Tennessee can have a good day offensively. But I don't, I don't, I mean, those numbers of what's happened in the last two years, I just think you need to put that out of your mind right now because this is a different looking Mizzou team, and they're playing much, much better. I think for Tennessee to win, and and I asked Josh Heupel this earlier in the week. You've got to stop the run. You've got to channel it on the run game. You can't let Cody Schrader take over this football game. Make Brady Cook beat you with his arm. And he's good enough to beat you with his arm, but try to make Missouri as one-dimensional as you possibly can because the question was kind of posed as you have a you have an offense that you're going up against that kind of does everything well. How do you balance attacking you know the, the pass or the run? He said you've got to start with the run because everything builds off that run. So I think Tennessee's, you know, number one rush defense in the league. I think Tennessee will do, do a good job. you got to stop the run and start there and, and try to force Brady Cook into making the wrong decision. We'll see if it happens. Offensively, you've got to run the football. Um, again, that's been the one constant all year long. I think Joe Milton, again, is playing good football right now, but Tennessee's at its best. Tempo as well when you're running the football efficiently, picking up that first first down, and that's all with, uh, with Jalen Wright. So... Um, that's kind of what I look for. A lot of the line of scrimmage, a lot of the run game on both sides. Who's kind of a key player, not named, you know, Brady Cook or Joe Milton or Jalen Wright for that matter for Tennessee that will show out if Missouri wins this football game. So you're asking me who I think will be a big player if Missouri yeah, wins. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I think obviously Luther Burden's a big a big part of it. He's he's actually questionable for this ball game. He's going to play. Right? He's going to play. I, yeah. I've got to think he's going to play. He, he looked like he looked okay in practice yesterday, from all accounts. I got to think he's going to play. But you know, I think it's who who's going to step up beyond. Beyond him is always a question. I mean, Theo Weiss has been really good all season. Mookie Cooper has been a solid piece all season. So I think what you're going to see from Tennessee in the passing game, they'll probably concentrate on Luther Burden a pretty good bit. Mm -hmm. I think if if Mookie Cooper in particular, maybe even Brett Norfleet, the tight end, if they can make the back end of that Tennessee secondary, you know, maybe the third, fourth guy, in terms of coverage there, if we can make them pay, I, I think we're in pretty good shape there. And, and honestly, you were saying, Missouri, you thought that was a, a dub for Tennessee coming into the season. I think most of Missouri fans would have probably leaned that way as well. Yeah. And right now, I think this game is basically a toss-up. I'm leaning toward Missouri simply because it's in Columbia. If it mm -hmm. were in Knoxville, I think I'd lean the other way. Yeah, um, it, it's very much a toss-up. I think Tennessee, yeah, at the time of this recording, Tennessee's still a point-and-a-half favorite on the road. That total yep, is 58-and-a-half. Right. Uh, that's according to FanDuel, um, America's number one sports book. Yeah, and, and again, you typically usually get three at home. Um, this is a this is going to come down to the wire, in my opinion. Again, this is not going to be what happened in Columbia 2021, what happened in Knoxville 2022. I think it's going to be a close game. And another guy that could stand out that that I think for Tennessee, if Tennessee wins this game, would be Squirrel White. You know, five foot nine in the slot, weighs a buck sixty. He's a good player, and he and Joe Milton have, have uh, kind of got that that 
that long toss down the field down the last yeah. couple of weeks. He's had a couple of, you know, 30, 40 yard receptions. So I think Squirrel White would be one to watch out for. And, and Tennessee destroyed Missouri last season from from the slot in particular. Yeah. Just getting matchups against safeties just over and over again. And it, it, it was ugly for the Missouri defense, which was a good unit last year, but Tennessee mm-hmm. just humiliated them, quite frankly. And sometimes we'll get schemed up with the motions and the splits you were talking about earlier to where the slot receivers match up with a linebacker. Like there was the Kentucky game last year when Jalen Hyatt was being guarded by a linebacker out wide. It's like, right. oh, it's not going to go well. You know? So right. um, I, I'll go with Tennessee. I mean, uh, again, uh, when it's this close, you always go, you know, always go with the team you cover. I feel like, you know, sure. you always slam right. with, the, yeah. with the home crowd. And, yeah. and I think Tennessee can win this game. I think it'll be close. Um, I'm excited to see what the environment's like up there in Como. Um, a couple of years ago when I was there, it wasn't the best season, so it was like sure. an early game and it was cold and rainy. Right. I'm excited to see. People I think will be excited for be. this one. It, it's going to yeah. be a full crowd and it's going to be an excited crowd, even coming off a Georgia game. Missouri fans know this is a gigantic game for sure, no doubt about it. Yeah, it should be a good one. I'm excited. So I'll, I'll side with Tennessee. I don't know. I think Tennessee can get this by three or four points and uh, we'll see what happens. Regardless, monster game for both teams if you want if you're a locked on balls listener or, or viewer and you want more coverage and more preview and more notes on the missouri tigers give john miller locked on mizzou uh, a listen a, a a watch here before saturday's kickoff and the same if you're a mizzou fan you want to know more about the balls go on over to locked on balls and uh, and learn more about tennessee volunteers be the smartest guy or gal in your section be the smartest fan at your tailgate right with us here on locked on balls and locked on mizzou I appreciate you guys as always, John. It's fun as always, man. We'll see what happens on Saturday, all right? Appreciate you, Eric. Thanks for having me on, man. All right. Thank you so much for watching and listening Locked on Vols and Locked on Mizzou.